and I've gotten, come to know Edgar over the years and become a huge, huge fan of his writing. And some people say the best way to make a political point is understatement. But with Hethcote, he manages to massively overstate his case in a way that's completely uncontestable. In the same way that if, if, if Stephen Hawking says something about physics, you think, well, it's Stephen Hawking. I don't fucking know. It's probably true. And it's the same, the same with Hethcote. He is so passionate and so polemical and yet so meticulous and so careful and so correct in his writing that everything he writes is utterly indisputable. And this book, it actually reads, it's prose, but it, it reads, it could only have been written by a poet, could only have been written by Hefka, and it's so meticulous and, and so forensic. It reads like a brilliant academic paper. It's like academic research of the highest order. And, uh, and it would utterly destroy Boris Johnson if he had the attention span and human empathy <laughs> to get through more than a couple of paragraphs. <laughs> it would totally destroy him. It's not the kind of solipsistic ad hominem hatchet job that you would get in a sort of tongue-in-cheek spectator article. This is fucking visceral. He absolutely hates <laughs> Boris Johnson <laughs> in a way that everybody should. <laughs> it's... Hola. It's very, very harsh and absolutely fair, and that's the brilliant thing. There's no holds barred, there's no mucking around. Hefka absolutely hates his target. And even then you look at something and think, oh, bloody, that's, a, that's a bit strong, you think, but it's Hefka, it's true. It's, <laughs> it's indisputable. So I do thoroughly recommend it. A, a veteran, uh, the ranter is, is an ugly word and it's misused, but a, a, another brilliant ranter in the same <laughs> radical English or British anarchist tradition as Hefka an old squatting friend and agitator, Tony Allen. I'm not going to use this microphone because it really did ought to be thrown somewhere. Uh, shut the fuck up. Right. Uh, no, I've known him, yonks. He, the point of standing up here is he nearly got me arrested so many times. <laughs> Uh, I met him when we were both squatting and we started a thing called the, the Rough Tough Cream Puff Estate Agency for Squatters. And, uh, and we used to just put out bulletins of empty property and then go out with a crowbar and open them up. And uh, it was his idea, but I was the one that nearly got arrested. Uh, and also we used to go out putting up graffiti everywhere. And to my mind, his best lines are written on walls in Labrook Grove in 1977 and 1976 outside uh, the school, uh, what's the school on St Irving's? No, this my right, own school on Portobello Road, it said, we teach all hearts to break. Colville. And, uh, no, it wasn't Colville, it was the other one, I can't remember shit, man. And, uh, but endlessly, life is biodegradable art. Ooh. Okay, not ooh. See if I give a fucking cut. Anyway, so, um, endless, endless beautiful graffiti. And he turned me into a stand-up comedian. He also turned me into a graffiti artist. Good luck, mate. Long way. More help. Um, when I was 15, I walked into Henry Ford's bookshop on the Charing Cross Road and found Hethcote Williams's The Immortalist, uh, which blew my, blew my head off. Uh, the last line of that play is, there are people alive now who will never die. Put that on the news. And that ignited my love of language and what writing can do. Uh, and thanks to the great Roy Hutchins, I was able then to get in contact with Hethcote uh, a few years ago. And from that, uh, I directed uh, uh, the first stage of his latest play, Killing Kit, which is arranged oh. by my friend Dave Wybrow at his Theatre the Cockpit Theatre. Okay. Uh, and this okay. is what I wrote in the programme. I'll call this a 90 second lecture in the form of a poem on Hethcote Williams. In times to come, devotees of what might be called the true poetry will find a singular voice broadcasting from the sensationalist frequency of one century on and into our own. Celebrant of the whale and elephant, lover of the dolphin, this voice and the spirit shaped around it exorcises both car and politician in an attempt to transform us from the base metals that ground us towards a more cherubic foundation where we may at least sense the angel as he, she or it passes by. A scientific espouser, he is also the accuser of royalty 
and defender of poets who created the crown he currently embroiders. Actor and observer, he has etched his poetic onto both page and pavement and across the internet's eye. His is a style that will last beyond the trends that restrict us. His is a language that teaches the cumbersome word how to fly. I dreamt several times of visiting his house as a young man, and this was clearly the dark's deep depiction of an early aspiration or sigh. With such breaths, thoughts are shared, and I am now proud to say I write with him. His books, work and vision are some of the richest things you could buy. These are the words for Hefgut. Now I urge you all to renew him. In the vows a reader makes to a writer are where the word and the heart both reside. Thank you. Cyra Viola, who's, uh, who's novel Jukebox, yes. uh, hesco has been raving about and would like a few words from Cyra. Um, it's a surreal being here. Um, I just want to say he's one of the, uh, he's probably the most influential person in my writing, uh, basically because he's completely fearless um, and he um, makes you take risks and uh, encourages you but he also has enormous humility, magnanimity, and generosity of time. He's um, extremely beneficial with his time. He's very kind, um, and he's just been very, very encouraging in a very sort of white, elitist, literary world um, where you know people who are outside the fold don't get a look in at all. Um, and he takes risks because I'm a complete unknown. Um, I'm a novice and I'm at the very uh, start of writing journey, but he encourages, supports, and uh, always tells you to never ever give up. So, like, Fame makes a man and takes things over. Desperately wanting to be famous, Herostratus ran into the temple at Ephesus, which was then the seventh wonder of the world, and he set it on fire while shouting out his own name. I am Herostratus! Appalled by a criminal trying to manipulate posterity, the city outlawed all mention of Herostratus on pain of death. Yet soon he was better known than those who had built the temple, or even the goddess Artemis to whom the temple had been sacred. Flashbulbs now echo all those destructive flames. Dazzling electronic altars seethe with media-mad moths, each of them spurning the eye of a god for the eye of a camera, and everyone still dying to be immortal in the same uncaring void. Well, who's ever heard of Herostratus now? The questions met with a shrug, or a blank stare. In space, where even Shakespeare and Christ are unknown, the nameless drift unnoticed through stardust and moonshine. I am Boris Johnson! Fame, 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 fame. Thank you very much. Make space for, for the author tonight. Yeah. Please, welcome. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Williams. Oh, yeah. You might wonder what sparked off this tirade against Boris Johnson. I just noticed that he was using up a lot of media space and that he was a man who Peter Pan might describe as a no good sticky end. Well, having, having been um, appalled by the idea of him becoming a national treasure in many people's eyes, having no discernible virtue, but someone who, uh, for whom the Germans have specially coined a word, back Pfeifengesicht, a face that deserves to be punched. 
I, was, I wrote the book. And uh, while writing it, I was pleased to learn that one morning Boris Johnson would have drawn the curtains of his two million pound house in Islington to be greeted by a graffiti which read, Boris, liar, racist, opportunist. I rather wished I'd written it. I used to write a lot of graffiti, often in collaboration with Tony Allen, who's here today. I'll finish with one. Use your birth certificate as a credit card. I have a seven-line poem to go with the graffiti. Use your birth certificate as a credit card. I'd spray can this slogan almost everywhere, believing the world was a common treasure house, and that being born entitled you to a share. I'd then keep an eye on the graffiti's lifespan, and would often find myself amazed by its lasting for years in the poorer districts. But if they were gentrified, it'd be erased. Ooh, <laughs>